Amen. Everybody happy? Let me tell you a great movie to watch. How many of you ever watched the movie Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith? You need to watch it. I want to tell you, um, Susan and I watched it recently when we were in Alaska. Um, I think most of you know we went. We had uh, six days and nights in a cabin. Hardly no cellular. Thank God. And uh, no internet, no nothing except DVDs. And uh, we watched this movie, and it's, it's based on a true story. And um, um, it just really touched us very, very deeply. Because I want to tell you, determination and determination with God achieves what many people believe is impossible. And, you know, every one of you are a, a miracle that God is working and manifesting before other people. So just just had that movie on my heart, wanted to uh, suggest, suggest it to you. Honored to be with you. Let me tell you a couple of things that Ian didn't tell you. Uh, when we receive first fruits coming up October the 15th, half of the money that you give on that Sunday is going to go towards paying off the building and getting debt free. So, uh, you know, save some money and come prepared. Uh, you know, we, we're on schedule, May of next year we'll be debt free, but we would really like to be debt free by February and with this, this congregation, this, this ministry will be 20 years old February the 22nd, I think it is, is the actual date. And uh, we'd like to have a big weekend of burning the mortgage. When, when, I mean, come on, get excited about it. I mean, you know, just 10, uh, less than 10 years ago, we refinanced $985,000 on this building. We didn't borrow any extra money. We just refied got a 4% interest loan, and in ten year, less than 10 years' time, we're going to be debt-free. Um, last time I talked with anyone that knew, they said we're probably at the value of this building somewhere between $2.7 and $3 million. And so that's, that's a pretty good accomplishment for a group of people of this size. And uh, thank you for your, your faithfulness and... Um, with that because it's very important so remember October the 15th and as Ian said bring your best covered dish amen and uh, we're going to have a great time of fellowship today I got to leave as usual I go to Jonesboro and preach this afternoon we get home late late tonight but that Sunday Susan and I are going to hang around and hug your necks and Just be with family. Amen. Down up here, man. You know, when your heart connects with people, it doesn't disconnect. And I love the Blaines, but I love you, Corey. Proud to call you a friend. With that. Well, I want to talk with you today. I want to share a dream with you. And then I want to talk to you about a kingdom mindset. Back in 2008, this ministry... Uh, you know, the bubble busted, real estate started falling, repossessions were everywhere, and we went through a very difficult time here. We try to keep about three months uh, budget in the account at all times, and we went through the three months reserve, and it was getting down to where uh, it was pretty serious. And I told Susan, I said, I'm going to go away for a few days and fast and pray. There's something out of order. 
and I need God to show me what it is so we can put it back in order. This is how Susan and I live. We discovered a scripture 40 some years ago. It's in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. It says, if you break the hedge, a serpent will bite you. And so when we start going through difficult times, we look around. Is, is there something we've done? We don't start blaming our neighbors. We don't start blaming uh, each, you know, each other or other people. We start looking, is there anything we've done to break the hedge? And so I went away. I, I checked in a hotel, and I'd no more and got in the hotel, kind of laid out my Bible and laid out my stuff there, and I hadn't even really engaged in prayer and the Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, there's something out of order I need you to show. And this is what he said to me. He said, are you a American trying to live in the kingdom? Or are you a kingdom man that lives in America? And in my answer was immediately, I said, I am now a kingdom man that lives in America. I shifted my thinking because I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to tell you that we don't go through times that are lean and we don't tighten our belt and difficulties come. You know, it rains on the just and the unjust. And, and when time, listen, a, a, a few years ago when Trump was in office and the economy was a lot better and milk wasn't costing what it is today, it, the, the unjust people were reaping out of that just like the, the just was. But now that inflation is high and things that are going on, we're, we're all going through this together. And so uh, I want to talk with you today ab about some significant points on how to step into a kingdom mindset but I want to preference it with a dream I had the morning of July the 4th. This dream impacted me greatly. Let me pull it up here. Uh, it impacted me in a very, very significant way. Um, I titled this dream, The Ultimate Birth Pain. In the morning of July the 4th, 2023, I probably mentioned this the last time I was here, the Justice Gate Angel. Some of you know, in 2015, I had an encounter with an angel in West Memphis, Arkansas, in a service there. And it was uh, revealed to me that it was the, the angel that guards the Justice Gate. And uh, about a, a, a year now, maybe a little bit more, this angel is in my dreams almost, almost 100%. I can't say 100%, but 98 plus. And it comes in the drain. And this particular morning, the angel came into my bedroom and woke me up. I've never had a dream where the angel woke me up. And when, they, when this angel woke me up, I sat up on the side of my bed and the angel began to speak to me. Now, can I just add a little humor in my friend Dutch Sheets? When I was sharing the dream with him, he said, so you're telling me this Justice Gate angel woke you up and you sat in your underwear on the side of the bed and talked to an angel. And I said, yes, I did. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, you know, I don't sleep fully clothed. And I didn't think because of it being in the dream, I didn't think, but I didn't think it was important to get dressed to hear what he had to say or what the angel had to say. So anyway, the angel said, tell the people that will hear. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, it says, Today, if you will hear my voice. Now, let me just share with you, that's a decision. Are you going? Listen, if you're going to recognize the voice of God, you've got to be willing to hear the correction, the encouragement, the exhortation, even maybe the rebuke. Are you hearing me? you got to hear it all. You can't just hear part of it. You've got to hear what God is saying. He said, tell the people that will hear what is coming to this nation cannot be stopped by prayer. That's sobering. I believe prayer moves mountains. Amen. Amen? But we all know you have to pray according to God's will, according to the will of heaven, according to the, the kingdom plan. But he said, cannot be stopped for prayer, but to know the prayers of now will become the push to deliver the nation. 
Let me just share with you. I want to encourage you. There's a deliverance coming to this nation. It's going to be messy. It's going to be ugly. There's probably going to be some casualties. I hope I get proved wrong on that. But there, there is a reset, not a global reset, not what the one world order wants to do, but there's a reset coming. And let me just tell you, God cannot reset everything that needs to be reset if he doesn't reset the church. And he can't reset the church if we don't take on more of a kingdom mindset. Had a conversation this morning with Ian, and uh, just he was sharing something with me about a business uh, procedure, business, and it was kingdom. I said, that's not just business, that's kingdom. That's how kingdom people think. And when you have the ability to think with a kingdom mindset, see, the kingdom is not meat and drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And righteousness, which is right relationship with God, it comes through repentance and it results in change. Obedience, obedience brings peace, but it's an action. How many of you know if you're being obedient to God, there's an action to it? Like, quit doing that. Are you hearing me? And y'all, y'all, today, will you all pray for Kay Vernon, my friend? I don't, I'm trying to figure out. It's been at least 10 years since I've had a banana pudding, and she brought me one today. I stand here today 19 pounds lighter than I was about 90 days ago, and she brings me, thank God, a banana pudding. <laughs> thank you, Kay. I've eaten her banana pudding for a long time now, and they're good banana pudding. So, so soon, and I appreciate uh, the fact that she would uh, would do that for us. Are you hearing? Let's go on with that. We'll become the push to deliver the nation. The prayers of now will cause the pain of the ultimate birth pain to be intense but productive. Let me just share something with you. This coming Tuesday. Everybody say Tuesday. Tuesday. Be praying for Lily Beth Brooks, Elijah Brooks, Jody Blizzard, Jada Blizzard, because their uh, their son is going to, they're going to induce labor and going to be born. They're naming him Walt. I've already got his nickname, Longmire. Some of y'all won't get that. But anyway, that's what Longmire guy's first name was. So I'm going to call him Longmire. But anyway... This, this child is going to be born. And so it's going to be the ultimate birth pain. You mothers that are here that have delivered a child, it's a bittersweet moment. You feel the pain. You feel uncomfortable. You feel miserable. But I want to tell you, you know, uh, I don't know if I've ever shared this story, but when our son Dean, our last child, was born, uh, it was a good delivery and everything, but they over-medicated Susan, and she started freaking out. Now, let me just tell you, this was before either one of us got born again. And so my wife is seeing the walls close in and all this kind of stuff, and I'm in the hospital room, and I didn't know how, you know, how to pray to God, and everything's freaking out. And then because she was freaking out, they wouldn't bring the baby in the room, and she got in her mind there was something wrong with our son. And I finally had to go down to the desk and hit on the, the, the desk, and I said, bring that child into the room and let her hold it. The moment she held that child, all the medication for, that she had been over, medicated with it just you know peace filled the room peace filled her are you hearing me and so in this this that's coming to this nation it's an ultimate birth pain but listen to this the prayers of now will cause the pain of the ultimate birth pain to be intense but productive how many of you are ready to move into more of a time of productivity amen and it says, tell the people to breathe deeply. You, you mothers understand this. Intercessors understand this. And know that that which is bitter in your belly 
will be sweet in your eyes. There's something great coming, giving to us by Abba Father. And, but we're going to have to endure. You know, I've been preaching for 25 years. We've moved into the apostolic age. One of the signs of the apostolic age, one of the signs of an apostle is endurance. Look at Paul. Shipwrecked. Beaten. Snake bit. Stoned. And I... I believe with all my heart I can go into the Greek there and prove to you from Greek word he was dead and raised from the dead. I believe that with all my heart. And so he endured some things. Are you hearing me? And so if we truly are in the apostolic age, the restoration of the fivefold ministry, then we're in a time of enduring some things. I want to encourage you, don't be fearful. I heard a message preached this week and I just didn't witness it and even the person preaching was using the word suspicion you know the word suspicion ties to superstition I don't think we need to be suspicious because suspicion will move you into where you become super you know there are people that won't walk under a ladder you know there there's a lot of superstition we were just with someone that works in Haiti I don't remember who it was now, somewhere we were, and they were telling us about how hard it is ministering there. I've ministered in Haiti years ago. And because they're, you know, the 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 national religion of Haiti is voodoo. And they have all kind of they got hoodoo, they got every kind of I won't say that, I'm gonna say do that with that, and most of it is is I mean all of it is corrupt and is bad. So how many of you are ready to see something sweet? To your eyes even though it's been challenging in your spirit okay now I want to just get into several mindsets of way of preparing yourself to think do you, you know that they uh, y'all heard me share this they say that if they took all the money in all the world and evenly divided it among all the peoples in the world that within nine months, the people who control the money would have it back. And some of that is a skill, but some of that is a mindset. People that, that do not let money control them, but they control, that's a different mindset. I remember my, my dad was made a lot of money in his life and lost a lot of money in his life. But I remember one day I called him and he had, he had retired. I think he retired about five times. And he retired, and he, and he had a little uh, farm equipment lot beside his house, and he had traded for a used hay baler, big round hay baler. And he decided he would just use it. Probably wasn't going to sell that hay seed. He would do some custom baling. So I called him and I said, how's the custom baling going? He said, "Ah." Oh, he said, you know, up here got stones out in the pasture, and I picked up a stone and hit a piece of metal, and it caught the hay that was in the baler on fire, and the baler burnt to the ground. And I said, Dad, I hope you had insurance. He said, no, I didn't have no insurance. I said, Dad, I said, he said, I didn't have much money in it anyway. He said, I traded for it. And I said, well, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to retire. I was tired of baling hay anyway. <laughs> so I might, he wasn't being frivolous, but... You know, some things control people too much. And when they lose something or something bad happens, we had a catastrophic hailstorm come through up where we live, and, and uh, the house Dean has bought, the roof was damaged. The house we live in, the roof was damaged. Dean's pickup had $8,000 hail damage. Are you hearing me? I mean, it was, it was something else that, that came, but... Now, praise God that we, we pay our insurance and we have good insurance companies and they're paying on all, all this. But the, beside that, you, don't, you have to understand, rise above things in your mindset. The first thing uh, I want to read to you from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. If you want to go there with me, it says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Everybody say with me, overcomes the world. How many of you realize the world is really coming at us right now? There is so much corruption. You know, the part that gets me the most is, uh, is, <coughs> is the fact 
that there's just no common sense. I posted this on Facebook the other day. The Biden administration has brought forth not a law, a policy that says your ceiling fans are going to have to be made different and it's going to take $50 million to retool the factories that make ceiling fans and it's all done so it'll save you a dollar 38 cents a year. Come on, help me. Is there any common sense in that? You know, I, I'm so against what they're doing. We're going to get rid of a brand new electric stove and buy a gas one. You know, I, that's a little bit of rebellion there. But come on, it's, it's not making any sense. You know, how many of you read about the hottest temperature? There? And it's been hot this summer. Well, I looked it up in Arkansas where they were saying it was the hottest. Well, the hot, listen, it was a whole lot hotter in 1914. The heat was a whole lot hotter than, and average more days and, and everything. See, they think they can tell us whatever they want us to hear, and we're going to buy it and, 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 and live by it. Let me, let me look up something. I'm going to hit this just a little bit, but let me, let me look up something here just real quick. And uh, let me find this. All right, this, this actually, a friend of mine posted this on Facebook. He said, uh, it shows a woman working in a garden. It said, y'all are about to find out why your great-grandmother washed her aluminum foil and saved her bacon grease. And Facebook posted this. This is false information. The information above, as checked in another post by an independent fact checker, proved this to be wrong. There is absolutely no evidence people ever saved aluminum foil or bacon grease. We still save bacon grease. <laughs> Come on, y'all. But can I tell you what? I, I, I better not say that. But there, there are people that will believe that and believe the, fi the fact checker. Listen, the science, the, they said, uh, believe the science. The science does not prove it. And it didn't do it. And it's coming out more and more and more and more and more. But whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You know, a few weeks ago when I was here, whenever I was here, I brought out of Luke 18 and verse 8, it said, when the Son of Man returns, will he really find faith in the earth? Listen, faith is not just believing something. Faith is, uh, is believing and putting something. Faith without works is dead. And we need a people of faith. Are you hearing me? And I listened to this deal, and, and, and this, this minister said that, you know, if a church is meeting in a building, you need to be, you need to be suspicious of them. <laughs> and then he went on to say how what the government is going to shut us down from meeting these buildings. Listen, they're going to try a lot of things, but you have to understand they've about pushed a lot of good and great people back in a corner. And I've said this many times, please do not let me offend you, so choose to not be offended. But let me tell you what my answer to all this is, hell no. And when I say that, I'm not cursing, I'm not being culturally wrong, I'm saying no to hell. It's not getting my grandkids, and it's not getting your grandkids, and it's not getting our children. Are you hearing me? Prayer works. Our daughter Diane is healing so that we're just amazed. She called Susan three times this week and talked over an hour. One time, I think it was two hours. And she's just giggly and bubbly, bubbly and, and her job is going better, and she's just doing good. And with, Listen, there are hours and days of prayer and calling her back as a prodigal. Our faith with works has prevailed. And your faith with works will prevail in any and every situation. Principle number one. 
We've got to take on the mindset that just being born again is not all about just going to heaven. But having our eyes open that we finally see the lordship of Christ over all the earth as king of kings. Get my Bible out of my briefcase there, if you would, Susan. Out of, as king of kings. So we've got we've to gotta start looking at this different. We've got to occupy till he comes. Someone challenged me recently and uh, accused me of being a dominionist. And I just, uh, I, I got a, I was texting with him and I got a picture of the book, Authority of a Believer. And I said, if this makes me a dominionist, then I am. Because I believe we have authority. I prophesied, especially in Memphis, I prophesied of cars all the time. You Don't run that light. Don't get over my lane. Are you hearing me? And, it, and listen, if you drive in Memphis, you prophesy too, probably. <laughs> it's not the worst city, but it's on, it's on a short list, I want to tell you. Are you hearing me? Let me see if I can get these eyes to read this. I'm going to read you a scripture here. Hold with me just a minute, all right? In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said that, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again... We cannot see the kingdom of God. See, be, becoming born again enters you in to where you can see how the kingdom is working all around you. The kingdom works in everything. You know, I started saying it a while ago, but righteousness is about uh, change through repentance. Obedient, uh, a peace is about obedience, which is an action. And joy is about relationship, uh, which is community. And so I was sitting quite a few years ago now, probably at least 15, 12 or 14, with a businessman in this area who was not a Christian. But he had heard me say something in a park store. And so we would talk from time to time, and I would talk kingdom. I didn't talk Bible to him. I talked kingdom to him. And he asked me one day, this kingdom that you talk about, explain it to me. And so I took this scripture about righteousness, peace, and joy, and I told him that, that righteousness is about change. Peace is about, about action, and joy is about community. And he said, I just gave my staff a lecture that we need to have more change, more action, and more community in our business. And a door opened into his mindset by using words that he could chew on and digest and hear something in. And we've got to realize that we can be kingdom. But see, we've got to move out of this thing. It's not just about, listen, we've majored for the last 100 years or 75 years in this nation on, <clears throat> excuse me, getting people born again. But we've not made near enough disciples. I think it was Dan said when we were with them something about the people don't know the Bible. I don't remember just how you said it. But I, I, I mean, they believe anything. I just had a, a, a minister somewhere in the earth go in his pulpit and tell his people to not have anything to do with me. But he never spoke to me about his concern about me. So I got in touch with him. And I just asked him a question. I said, where does Matthew 18, 15? Now, this is a word preacher. I said, where does Matthew 18, 15 come in? You, you know what scripture? If a brother errs, Go to him and you and him alone. There's a process here. There's an order of process. And this pastor informed me, oh, that don't apply here. Okay. And then I had one of the people in his congregation came to me and was talking to me about what he did. And they said, but it's okay. He, he said at the end of what he told us in the church not to have anything to do, he loved you. And I said, so let me understand this. This, this actual conversation, I looked the lady in the eye and I said, so if I go out and commit adultery on Susan and come home and tell her but I loved her, it's okay? It got quiet. She didn't have a rebuttal for that. Because just saying you love someone, listen, I, want, I, listen, I don't want to hear that you love me. Show me you love me. Amen? Someone's already today come up and showed their love for me. They gave me a Pentecostal handshake. And a hundred dollar bill in their hand. And I told them, I said, boy, that was a quick return because I just gave away 
when I got in this sanctuary $100 to somebody. Are you hearing me? I was a quick return. But love has actions. My dad was never one that told me over and over he loved me, but I never doubted his love. You know, maybe one or two times when he, he whooped me. You ever get a whooping? I got plenty of them and should have got more of them. Number two, and John, we understand through a kingdom mindset that John 3.16 is not just God loving individual sinners, but sending his son to redeem a created order. He wants you redeemed. But he also wants to redeem the falling order that came through the sin of Adam and Eve. And he can't do that without you and I being obedient. Is this okay? This is what God put on my heart. This is the best preaching I can do. It's preach what God said. Are you here? The, the word world in Greek is the word cosmos, which is the systems of created order. Thus, God wants us as his kingdom people to apply the Bible and kingdom truth in our economics and public policy, not just to pray and not just the fruit of the Spirit. I, I'm afraid to say to you that the, the church sometimes is dangerously wrong in applying too much spirit, spiritual matters to it over. You know, I don't, you know, right now there's a lot of people that are suffering, and, and this is no common thing, but they're having physical illness because they've not taken care of their body. You know, Susan and I are working very hard. I, I, I think I might have shared if I hadn't, I'll tell you. I could do 10-day water fast and gain two pounds. Something about that's not right. Well, our doc, my doctor discovered it in a blood work cup. I was making four times as much estrogen as a man was supposed to. In other words, I was getting in touch with my feminine side. No. <laughs> and so they got me on an estrogen blocker for a while. And I just had blood work up again. We'll know as soon as the lab gets it back if it's working. But I've now lost 19 pounds. So, you see, I mean, I know that I don't look like I eat right, but I really do. Now, you can pray for me in this area. Uh, I, I don't exercise enough. Okay? So Susan's got a new exercise plan. And if she can just pull it off, I think it's going to work. She's going to take and put a gun on me every morning, drive me seven miles from the house, put me out of the vehicle, and i got to walk back to the house every day. <laughs> that probably will work, okay? <laughs> See, God wants us as his kingdom people to apply his word in every area. I recently posted, it's not put God first, family second, Church, I've seen that all my... No, God wants to be the center of your family. God wants to be the center of God. A lot of people, God is their pet doctrine. It's not, they're not allowing it to be the center of everything. Number three, the third mindset. See, the ministry gifts, which we talk about in Ephesians 4.11, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers, is seen as equipping the saint for the works of the ministry is to fill the marketplace, not a church. Let me share with you. Several years ago, any, anybody here? I know my friend back there, they'll know, but anybody know the name Steve Fry? He was the Hosanna Integrity worship leader back during the, when Hosanna got their feet on the, on the ground. I was in a meeting that he held there in Franklin, Tennessee. And in this meeting, it was a roundtable discussion and da-da-da-da, and they had a guy there that worked for the large, there's three large insurance companies that only insures churches and nonprofits, and he worked for the biggest. And he got, and some discussion came up, and he got up and shared this statistic. He said, 87% of every mega church we insure the senior ministers on antidepressants. I'm not speaking against mega churches in this, but I'm speaking with, listen, 
If you're on, having to be on antipresence to lead something, then you need to realize there no, you're not embracing the grace of God or there's no grace on what you're doing. Am I, see, you know, how to, you know how to endure what's coming? Find that grace that God has for you and embrace it because his grace empowers you to be who you are. <clears throat> Paul said, "My his grace is sufficient. That wasn't, that's not that, you know, a lot of things we call grace today. You know, have you ever, you ever said that? Well, if somebody's in sin, we'll just give them grace. You can't give them grace. Only God can give grace. We can give mercy because mercy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Am I, am I doing okay? Some of you are looking at me like, in fact, I just we, on our security camera today, our neighbor's cows got out and over on our property and everything, but security camera just showed me that the neighbors are around and his cow's back up. I was so happy, I thought we were gonna be able to butcher a cow tomorrow, but anyway, <laughs> have a barbecue. See, we need to see the five-fold ministry operating in the marketplace. Amen. Jeff, I'm gonna use you, but when you talk to, I've talked to Jeff over our relationship a few times about uh, when the government was helping with some money during the COVID, I got his, but what I love about talking to Jeff is he doesn't just give you banker sense, he comes at it with a kingdom perspective. And I remember one of the things you told me and it just you know, didn't echo, it just carried great value. You told me uh, in this money that they were given us to make sure that we kept it separate and make sure that we 100% could validate we used it for what they got. Do you know there's a lot of people in trouble today because they didn't do that? <coughs> so we set, <coughs> excuse me, we set the money over to the side and we paid for what it was supposed to pay for with that. And, uh, and, uh, with it and stuff but see it, it it wasn't that he just told us what the bankers wanted or the gun he gave us kingdom principle Amen. see what sent jim baker to prison was he used money that was given for one thing for something else you can't do that in non-profit 501c life that's breaking the law. Am I making sense? And see, there are kingdom principle things. I remember a couple sitting with Susan and I one time, and told, so he's not a bad boy. He's 17, and he's only smoking a little bit of marijuana and drinking about a case of beer. And I looked at the parents, and I said, you're deceived. If you believe that because he's not, you know, just doing that amount, he's a good boy. No. He's headed down the road that will get him in, in trouble. And he went through that trouble and legal problems and everything else. Number four, we got a shift in our kingdom mindset. Remember, I am not an American trying to operate in the kingdom. I'm a kingdom. My main citizenship is in the kingdom. Amen. We got a shift from a platonic and dualistic approach to life. You say, what is that? Well, K sera sera. I order my own world based on God's will. Amen. You know, I we meet people all the time that their whole life is chaotic. They 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 create that. You know, you you have to determine it. You know, how many of you want to get debt free? Yeah. How many of you got a strategy? You know, uh, Dave Ramsey, I don't agree with everything he says, but can I just tell you, there's some great things he says that will help you move into debt-free living. But you got to do, you've you got to have a strategy. You don't wake up one day and go out in your backyard and there there's an old scrub pine tree and it's turned into a money tree and there's $100 bills on it. It don't happen that way. Even God's word said, give and it shall be given to you. Shake down, press together, good measure, running over. From the bosom of man, we paid off. You know, we probably raised up there now over a over million dollars, but we did it because people chose to partner with us. And they chose to see that vision come to pass. 
In John 1, 14, I'm going to quote it from the Message Bible, and it said, And the Word became flesh and moved in the neighborhood. Look at your neighbor and said, That's you. So you're waiting on Mario Morello to come set his tent up in there and get everybody saved. You need to become the Word made flesh. When you become the Word made flesh in your neighborhood, things begin to change. I was thinking this morning, Leon, about what's going on over where y'all live, over there with uh, Iris and, and everything. I, I think that's the largest Iris campus or whatever. And it, it just, you just need to talk to this couple. I don't know if he's shared when he's been here before, but it's just amazing and everything. But let me just tell you, some people moved in there and started becoming the Word made flesh. That's the scripture that backs everything that's going on at Greenville. People are giving, I probably have this story butchered. Uh, Matt gave it to me, I think. And, but uh, there's some businessman, there's a ministry over there that works with women who have been incarcerated. And when they get out, some businessman has stepped up to help them get a college, some college education. Am I right on that? I th that's kingdom. That is kingdom. That's giving them a chance uh, to do it. And this, listen, there's no telling how how blessed that. He's not doing it to be blessed. He's doing he's doing to bless them. But in the kingdom. There is a natural reciprocation that takes place. What you sow, you reap. And while I'm here, butcher this sacred cow, this nation is not under judgment. We're reaping what we've sown for the last 50 years. Prayer went out of homes a long time before it did school. I'm amazed at the Christians today that are upset that their children can't go get abortions. Their daughters. Oh, yeah. The biggest lobbyist against putting prayer back in schools is a Christian university called Bob Jones University. They give more money to keep prayer out of the school than any other lobbyist. You know why? Because they said if we return prayer to school, the Muslims are going to be praying. And the Buddhists are going to be praying. And the cults are going to be praying. Y'all are pretty sharp people, but I want to help you understand something. Buddha don't answer prayer. Muhammad don't answer prayer. They're all dead. Their body rotted. But the God that we serve, the King of kings, he rose from the dead. And I'm telling you, hear me, there's a flesh and blood man sitting at the right hand of the Father. I'm not scared. I, I'm going to tell you, change that word. I'm not concerned about any Muslim prayer. I'm not concerned about any. You know, we, we've become too demon conscious. There are demons. I just cast one out of Dodie earlier. <laughs> Dodie was coveting my banana pudding. And I told her, I said, Dodie, you come out of that banana pudding demon. Thank y'all for letting me be me. The Word became flesh. You need to determine to become the Word made flesh at your workplace, to where you go and eat breakfast on Saturday mornings. I mean, somewhere. Are you hearing me? Susan and I were on an elevator yesterday with someone of not our ethnicity and, and uh engaged this lady in conversation she said she was there in the hotel we're staying in because they're having a family reunion and she was all excited about it. i'm getting to see family i hadn't seen and i mean she was just oh, jovial about it and i said you're not nash uh, your last name not nash is it and she said no and i said well i'm just trying to see if we were kin i was going to join the family reunion <laughs> and she looked at the color of my ethnicity and the color of her and she cut her eyes around at me and then you know she smiled Listen, I don't mean, I, I, did I notice that she was of a different ethnicity? Yes. But does that make us different? No. Do I notice that Kay is of a different gender? You know, uh, you hear me? But uh, there is diversity, but I just treat everybody like they're Christians. I talk to them like they're Christians. I talk about God. I don't, 
I don't slam it on like mayonnaise. I just talk to them and engage them and tell them what God's doing. And you know what? It penetrates. It sea. Some sow, some water. God gives the increase. Are you hearing me? The next one. In a kingdom mindset, we don't just uh, move towards, like, and I think it's great, march for Jesus, but we really move in for Jesus and immerse ourselves in the community. I think the march for Jesus, God has used them. But can I tell you, I'd much rather you become Jesus incarnated in whatever community you're in. Maybe you play in a bridge club, or maybe you, you know, a chess, you know, whatever, whatever. Just become the voice of life there. You can be the, the, everybody is expecting the world to go to hell in a handbasket, and we can be the voice of reasoning. Yeah, we're going to have to tighten our belts. Yeah, I mean, I need to buy a major piece of equipment for this operation up there. We cannot finish the 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 youth camp, the wilderness camp, without a, a mate. I'm talking about probably, you know, probably $85,000 investment. But I told Susan recently, I said, we've been buying one because I've come to faith. And I believe just like this land, God provided people to pay for this land. I believe when I step out and and and, and buy this piece of equipment, find the right interest on it, someone's going to step up and pay it off. And so we're fixing to buy a skid steer with a, a drum uh, uh, mulcher on the front of it because we got a lot of underbrush to clean up where this camp is going. And I bought a dozier. We're gonna, it's broke down right now. We're getting it repaired. We're going to sell it, put it towards that. But you got to have equipment. Our son, Bobby Dean Nash, and I work all the time on that property up there. I was watching security camera yesterday. He was mowing and trimming up for the meetings this week and everything. And I'm, I, that's not a complaint. We, you know, with it, but I'm just telling you. And by the way, I'm asking for prayer. A week from tomorrow, Susan and I leave with our son, Dean, and his wife, Heather, and we're headed to Yellowstone National Park, and we'll be in the park for at least 10 days or more. And no, I'm not going to be available on sale. And I'm not going to be doing the daily call. I'm going to be off the radar screen. And we're going up there and we're going, this is our 50th wedding anniversary. And we've been blessed by God and people to go to Israel, to go to Ireland, to go to Alaska. And we're going to finish this year up with going to Yellowstone, traveling up there and back. We're taking three weeks off. And we're going, to, we're going to sightsee on the way up there. We're going to sightsee on the way back. And if I can squeeze it in, we might even do it. Soon then I might get away at Thanksgiving and go somewhere. I'm making up for all those vacations that were really me going somewhere to preach and putting them in a hotel and have a swimming pool. You know, that was vacation. <laughs> Didn't I, Susan? <laughs> I wasn't always as wise as I am now. See, we got to serve our cities, our marketplace, callings as minister of the kingdom, not just serve God on Sunday in a church building, in a building that most call the church. Number six, the, the kingdom mindset is we need to embrace and understand there are apostles of government, there's apostles of law, there's apostles, a sent one. To be an apostle, it, it talks about you were sent. I was sent here 20 years ago to establish this work. And I couldn't have done it. You know, I, I, you know let me just tell you, when I told uh, Dan and Vicki Billman that I was coming here to this building, they said, well, we love you and we've always wanted to work with you, but we're not saying. When I talked to Thomas and Kathy, Lustrito, they told me the same thing. They said, you know, they had been here for a while and had gone through a lot of pastors and a lot of heartache. But, and, and it was because it wasn't in apostolic order. Okay? Not, that's not a blame. It's just the truth. And so they told me they wouldn't stand, but they did. 
And then the next thing I know, I preach in Waco, and I meet a couple, Chris and Lourdes Relier, and, and uh, they, they want to come visit. And then they come and visit, and then they want to move here. And they move here, and they become a part. And then others of you have come in and, and, and moved to be a part of it. And, of course, I knew Jim and Dodie Withrow out in Arizona mostly, but then they worked in Peru where I worked in Peru and, and everything with that. And then I go to, to uh, Lake Havasu City, and I preach, and one of their sons come up and hear me, and the next thing, they want to move here. And they came with this long-haired uh, surfer boy named Ian Withrow. And I remember him talking to me the first six or seven months or a year he was here. He, he was struggling with the culture here. How many of you know the culture out in Lake Elsinore, California is different from here? And he struggled with it. But look how God has planted him, his position with the company. And I'm learning, as I've talked with people while I've been here this week, half the church now works for the company he works for. Wow. Wow. I might need to quit preaching and get me a job at Barnhart. Are you hearing me? Man, I'd love to run one of their cranes. They probably wouldn't let me, but I'd love to. See, we've got to nurture the apostles in every culture, on every mountain, in every level. Number seven, people with a kingdom mindset understand the view of Jesus is king of the earth is not just, and not only just the head of the body. Every heathen, every agnostic, every atheist, every sinner you know, he's still their king. They might not recognize him, they might not embrace him, they might not with that, but he's still the king of kings. But can I tell you the other side of that? A kingdom mindset helps you know you're a king, and you're a king, and you're a king, and every one of you here are king. It's a little K, not a big K, but it's a, it's a, it, he's the king of king. And we've got to, listen, there's some things coming. I'm not here with a gloom and doom message, but, we're, you know, there, there's going to be some difficult decisions have to be made in the future. And if you can make them with a kingdom mindset, they're going to go much better. Are you hearing me? We've got to have this kingdom mindset, in order to not just endure, but we're going to advance. Do you know there were more millionaires made during the 1929 recession, depression in this nation than any other time? See, it, it, it's, <laughs> everything was down, you know, at that time. It was, it was not easy. My grandfather, right in the midst of the Depression in 1931, bought a farm equipment business. And we owned it to 1978. Can I boast to you? It, I just ran across an article. I didn't even know it that the other day. It was the largest farm equipment dealership in the United States. In, in a particular line of equipment. Okay? Largest one of this particular brand they had in the United States. And he bought it in 31. I grew up in it. Why? Because during a depression, somebody wanted out of a business. Let me tell you the story of my grandfather, because it'll emphasize this. He went to work for a man and worked a year. The way his wage was this, he could get groceries and a little bit of money. At the end of the year, when the guy sold his crop, he got paid his salary. At the end of the year, the farmer came to him and told him, said, uh, I can't pay my taxes on the land, and I'm, I'm going to have to quit farming. I can't pay you. And my grandfather asked him, he said, well, how much is your taxes? And I don't know what the amount was. And he told him, and well, the whole year, now my grandfather is younger than 16. One story said he's 14, one said he's 15 when it took place. I can't validate that, but he's younger than 16. I have validated that. And the whole year, anytime he was not working on the farm and he had time off, he went and worked for a man by the name of Carl Dirks. And he worked on his sawmills, on the motors, the machinery. He kept it up. And so he looked at the 
farmer who owed him money and he said, hey, if I could pay your taxes, could I have this farm? And the guy said, sure, I'm leaving. And my grandfather got the first section of land because he had worked elsewhere. Can I, you've probably never heard the name Carl Dirks, but let me just tell you, my grandfather so thought well of him that my dad's older brother was named Carl Dirks Nash. And Carl Dirks is where the Weyerhaeuser Company, that's the Dirks family that owns the Weyerhaeuser today, you know, with him. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is you got to have a strategy and you got to think different. And he worked and he saved his money and the guy couldn't pay him. So he applied the wages that were due and my grandfather paid the taxes and he turned that in. Susan knows he turned it in to thousands of acres before it was sold in the late 60s and with it. But see, we've got to see Jesus as the king of the earth, not just the head of the body of Christ. He is the head. Number eight, we understand that the church is not the totality of the kingdom. Man, we've got to debunk that. It's bad in the Western world. It's bad in the, in the buckle, uh, the, the <laughs> religious buckle here in Memphis area. It's not just the Church is not just the totality of the, of the kingdom, but it is the primary agent of the kingdom to be salt and light. No matter where you work, no matter where you eat lunch today, no matter what you do, you should be the salt and the light in that, in that business, in that workplace. And, and I, I just, someone just sent me a story of, uh, a relative was in the hospital and they stayed there so the uh, husband could work his job. They needed, you know, needed that. And with that, and this person led three people to the Lord in the hospital. Now, can I just tell you, they had not stood before the church and been ordained as an evangelist. But they stood before the people as a kingdom agent that had the good news to share with them to bring about change. Are you hearing me? I'm going to give you my last point. See, I believe that this message will help you with what's coming. I'm not going to tell you it's going to make it go away, but let me tell you what it will do. No, we have a promise. No weapon formed against us will prosper. I believe thinking this way. And we are to labor not only for revival, but to see a society reformed. Because revival brings people into the church, but reformation places believers and leadership out in society. I, wanna, I want wherever you go. Tracy, you do this, you know, with that. I've, I've talked with you enough, and what you do, you're, go, you're, you're great at what you do. And I commend you. And I want to say one other thing. You, you're great that you're overcoming what the enemy threw against your family. And the one thing that I can say to you, I commend you publicly today on this. You're not harboring hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness. If Jesus would stand before you, he would say, daughter, well done with that. And I, can, I could talk about others of you in this room. Listen, forgiveness is not something we do. It's, it's a way of life. Forgiveness is a way of life. Are you hearing me? I want to end today by talking about something a little bit personal. It's personal. You know, my sister had colon cancer, stage four. Was it stage four? I don't remember how it goes. It, it, but it's pretty serious, and she had a total... Um, colon remove surgery and of course the doctor told her said you know you're going to still need to take chemo well the first round of chemo she took just almost killed her and so she kept pressing in and I just told her I said Nan the answer to whether or not you take any more chemo is, is in you 
God will give you a witness of whether you should do it or not. So she called me one day and she said, I, I'm not going to have chemo. And I said, well, I can stand with you. If you feel that in your heart, I stand in agreement. So in the last little bit of it, she spoke with her oncologist, I think what the doctors called, and was asking some things. And this is what he told her. He said, if you have chemo, you have 95% chance the cancer will never come back. And she said, well, if I don't have chemo, what's the percentage? And the doctor kind of reluctantly said, 94%. So she's chosen not to take it. She's doing well. In fact, she, for the first time, she was out driving. This surgery was radical. And she, she was out driving yesterday for the first time. And, uh, and one of the things that we've learned uh, through someone that we met, uh, she hadn't been able to get, get this done yet, but she's been starting. She's been start taking high levels of IV infusion of vitamin C because it works against cancer. And uh, you'll probably hear me. I'm not going to preach on it today, but I started uh, three times now. I've had IV infusions of vitamins and minerals, and I'm amazed the change is made. For the first time in Clay Nash's life, for the last year and a half, I needed one to two cups of coffee to get stimulated in the morning. I've never been that way. She can tell you, three o'clock in the morning, my feet hit the floor, I can recite the Gettysburg Address. That, I'm, I'm not a superhero, I'm just telling you who Clay is. But for a year and a half now, I needed that one to two cups of strong coffee to get me stimulated to think. And I started having these IV infusions, and uh, it's gone, you know, with that. I'm just telling you, in fact, our nurse practitioner told us that all the young farmers in Arkansas are now getting it during the stress season and everything with that. So uh, there's a lot of wellness clinics uh, across almost every state, registered nurse and nurse practitioner do it. A lot of the nurse practitioners who wouldn't take the jab started their own wellness clinic. And uh, we have just located one in Harrison. I go Wednesday to get my first IV infusions there. I want to be able to walk all the miles I need to in Yellowstone. I want to get all the pictures. I'm, I'm actually renting a camera. I'm not a photographer, but I'm renting a camera. How many of you here knew a couple from Memphis named CJ and Erica Bergen? A few of you? They're working there for a camera shop in Yellowstone. And so he's gonna connect me up with a camera. We're carrying tripods and I'm gonna have pictures of wolves, packs and bears and a thousand buffalo they say is up there and everything with that. I'm excited, is that all right? If I be excited about this, we're, we're, we're pulling our fifth wheel up. We found an RV park right there at the uh, Yellowstone and we're gonna be staying in it and we're gonna be having a, having a great time uh, doing that and we're gonna take a week going there not like Clay Nash usually travels. We're not gonna do it in 17 hours. And uh, we're gonna stop and see things on the way there and we're gonna stop and see things on the way home. But pray for my sister. She's doing real well. She's strong. This whole thing has deepened her relationship with God incredibly. You know, I mean, her statement actually is, I wouldn't pray for cancer, but I'm thankful that the, what cancer has done in my relationship with God you know, and stuff. So here's what I want to leave you with. I want you to stand to your feet, and I want to pray over you that a kingdom of mantle, a, a kingdom mantle of kingdom understanding come upon you. People that have kingdom insight think differently. Can I tell you one thing they don't do? They don't think like victims. They don't think like victims. And, and we got a victim mindset over this nation. This administration wants you to think you got to have them. Amen? They won't, you know, I said this the other day. A label in some children's shorts said, be sure and remove your child before you wash this. I sent it to Dutch and Tim Sheets, and I said, we ain't going to make it, are we? <laughs> and I was being fun. Listen, I've never seen such craziness in my life. Amen? 
You, you might say, well, you keep talking about something's coming. Let me just say this. George Orwell, whether you like him or not, said this many, many years ago. Uh, what's the, tyranny is always brought forth by fraud and force. And when the fraud gets exposed, they move exclusively to force. That's what's ahead. I knew three weeks before this new COVID variant was coming, because of some connections I have, it was coming. I knew that what they have done already, you have to understand most everything that has enforced a lot of the COVID stuff, and it's real. And I believe it was really made in China, but it's real. But here, listen to this. Uh, the COVID thing is, it's all, it, none of this is law is what they're trying to do. Most every person that lost their job by, are getting their job back with big settlements. I say maybe, many or some. So what I'm trying to tell you, I got a call from someone that's in the know. And one of the places they're going to try to really push the mask and all this stuff this time through TSA because we're a traveling nation. And they're going to try to do it through policies. Policies are not law. And I, you know, I put this out the other day. I'm going to be humorous here. But the new variant of COVID, the name of it is bovine scat 24-7. Now, some of y'all getting that, some of you not. Listen, what I'm trying to share with you is this. I, per, soon as I personally know people who, of people, we don't know them, but we know of them who took, chose to take the shot and they got major immune system problems, health problems, and everything. I know too many. Now, you got to decide whether you, took, you take the shot or not and everything. But here's what you don't catch on the news. The Biden administration was just sued and lost. And they were sued over the statement that all these six shots they claim you need to have now is no science whatsoever backed it. They lost. You didn't see that on news, did you? You didn't hear that, did you? You know, with it. They're, and, and please, this is not about Trump, but they're out to destroy him. We are sitting in our personal friends with one of his lawyers. And this lawyer has multiple lawsuits going against her. And not only that, she wrote us for prayer, expects to be indicted. You know, with it, because they're doing everything they can to crush it with that but see you're the people with a kingdom mindset that we can make a difference and we can see the nation come. you ready for this mantle father i thank you for every person here every person watching by live streaming and i declare from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet they're being stirred but i release today a mantle a mantle of kingdom understanding and common sense to come upon your people i declare father no weapon formed against us will prosper but i declare father it's now time to stand to decree and to stand on your word and see heaven touch earth bless these people in a mighty way and cause them to be blessed coming and going and be blessed in every area of their life and their children and their children's children and on down their DNA. Father, we just release over them a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous value of kingdom and love of the King of Kings. Do this in Yeshua's name. Amen. I just heard one thing the Lord said. Somebody's got like a sciatic nerve pain. And, and I heard the God, Lord say, tell them when they wake in the morning, it'll be gone. No, no. He didn't say pray for you. I believe the angels already touched you. But he said, tell you that whoever that is that's having uh, a sciatic nerve pain, uh, that it'll be gone in the morning. Amen. Are you blessed? I do okay? Yeah. On one to ten, do I at least make a three? <laughs> oh.
Okay. All right. As long as I got to a three, I'm okay with that. Listen, we love y'all. We'll be back on the 15th. Uh, pray for us while we're headed to Yellowstone. We're pulling our fifth wheel trailer with us and we're staying in it. We got a great place to stay. We're, we're just looking forward uh, to having the time away. And Alaska was incredible. I'm trying to get pictures together. Uh, Sudan and I got to do a four and a half hour one way train ride and four and a half hours back and it was just phenomenal. Uh, I have to tell you, we just were so blessed. We went fishing, that was not as good an experience. The only halibut caught, she caught it. And, uh, but I caught shark, I caught stingray, I caught ugly fish. I mean, I caught the most ugly fish. I don't even, what was it called, Susan? Rockfish. I mean, I caught everything up there. But one of the reasons was the sea was so rough, we couldn't go out. We needed to go 35 miles out into the Alaskan Bay, and we couldn't do it. But they, the, the couple up there where we did the conference, they just, they just made us so uh, enjoyable. And by the way, they will be here, uh, Robert and Eleanor Road, their First Nation from Alaska, they'll be here in May of next year. They're going to come to us up there, and we're going to bring them down on the Sunday, and they'll minister. They're powerful people. God bless you. Enjoy your week. And if you could mosey up toward Branson, Missouri, on Friday and Saturday to about probably 2 o'clock, we're going to have a great time up there. And uh, we're going to minister to some people, and we're, we're excited about it. God bless you.